Here we go. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Big Idea. I am your host, Dr. Jeffrey Hanna, here at Clear Chiropractic, where we talk about how a small bone where your head meets the upper part of your neck can have a very big impact in terms of your health, your well-being, and your ability to enjoy the things in life that you really want to be able to do in ways that you would never realize are actually connected with that particular part of your body. And I've had a, a couple of people request that I do this uh, particular video that we're going to do here today for you, so finally getting it to you. It's about how it is that the upper part of your neck can affect your brain function, your mood, and just that internal sense of well-being, for lack of a better description as we know it. So we're going to have a look at a, a few things where there might be a couple of technical anatomical details here, but very, very important, very profound impact in terms of how your brain actually works. All have everything to do with the alignment, mobility, and the stability of what's going on in the upper part of the neck. So hope you enjoy this one. All right, so the first thing that I need to do is torture you with a little bit of neuroanatomy. What we are looking at here is a, a cross-section of your brain stem that's in line with the upper part of your neck. So what I've got here is a little model where we would be looking at the, the back of the head, brain stem sitting right here in that open spot right there, the top vertebra, so your atlas, and the second vertebra, the axis, which is the major anchor point for all the muscles that go to your head, down to your shoulder, and ultimately to your lower back. And even though I don't have it illustrated here per se, on the inside of that opening right there, there are a series of ligaments. They're called myovertebral ligaments or meningeal myovertebral ligaments. And what they do is they actually anchor your spinal cord at the base of your skull onto the C1 and the C2. And they act as a series of tension cables so that when you are moving your head, this delicate area is not getting compressed, crushed, or anything like that. Because you can appreciate, yeah, that wouldn't be very good for you to be able to, you know, have life. So there are ligaments that actually anchor and protect all of these structures here. And the problem is, is if and when the vertebra ever is locked out of its normal position. So it's not broken, it's not bleeding but it's not moving properly. And as a consequence, it's not able to support the normal weight of your head. What happens is those normal tension cables, they start to exert tension on these various structures themselves. And what's believed about these ligaments, not only are they essential for maintaining the integrity of this area, but they also assist with the normal circulation of the fluid that's going to be going up, down, and within your central nervous system. So right off the bat, what we're describing here is how you can have a problem with the vertebra alignment right up at the top, and that can be screwing around with circulation in your brain. But more than just that, there is a cluster of cells that we have identified here as N3. What is N3? N3 is a, a cluster of cells that's known as the periacuductual gray matter. It's a part of what is known as the reticular formation or the reticular activating system in your brain. You see, each one of these areas that I'm showing you in a cross-section, these are either clusters of cells that are involved with doing stuff in terms of your brain life functions, communicating messages between brain, body, body, and brain. But it's also the series of pathways, like roads or conduits or cables, that's transmitting that information up, down, and within the system. And there is tons of information going on every single second, something to the tune of 40 quadrillion bits of information every single second. And of that, if you really focus your attention, there's only maybe about 5% of that that is entering your conscious awareness, let alone your focus. That's going to be more like 0.0000005% of all of that information. So point being, lots of stuff is being processed here at any given moment. And we have this cluster of cells located right at that level 
that I've just described there that is involved as the primary filter mechanism. Now, what we know is that if you have a nerve that is under tension, and as we described, is if you've got an issue right up at the top like this, it starts to exert tension through those different uh, areas, so the nerves, spinal cord, brain stem itself, that it starts to cause it to misfire. And suddenly, the normal functional processes that should be happening at this vital level of your brain, of your body, they can start sending messages in ways that should not, should not be occurring. And as a consequence, you can start to have a series of problems going on. In addition to that, because your brain is not stupid, is when there are problems that are affecting the way that the normal joints should be moving, your brain is also receiving additional warning messages. Basically, danger, 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 even if it's not pain messages per se, because there's three kinds of sensory nerve receptors in your neck. There are pain receptors, yes. There are proprioceptors. They're involved with muscle tension, but then there are also what are called pressure receptors that detect movement, and they tie into the parts of your brain that are responsible for coordinating your vision, your hearing, your balance, and your equilibrium. If there's a problem, a danger signal affecting any of those, well, guess what it's going to do? It's going to go into that circuitry that I've just shown you, and it's going to start to overload the circuit. It would be the equivalent as if you took your computer, turned on every single program, all at once and tried to download and upload and stream all at the exact same time. It's going to overload your circuitry. And your brain, as powerful as it is with that 40 quadrillion bits of information every single second, it still has a finite processing capacity. So when there is an excessive volume of information being processed at the level of your brain stem, because of a misalignment in the upper part of your neck. And if it's also creating tension in that area and also mucking around with circulation, guess what? That processing center is not going to be able to handle that volume of information. And as a consequence, like a computer processing too many programs, that's where you can start to have things acting slow, gluggy, and making processing errors. In this case, central processing errors. And that can, interestingly, show up in ways, again, that has nothing to do with pain whatsoever. So let's have a little look at that. Alrighty, so we have just described the general process, how the mechanical problem in your neck can create tension and irritation of the nerve receptors, and as a consequence, it can start to bombard your brainstem with abnormal information. Now, out of all of those other clusters of cells that I've shown you on the previous slide, it's not just the ones that are involved with the filtration of information. Yes, you have pain processing centers, muscle tension processing centers, you have the processing centers that go to all of your internal organs, all of your blood vessels, but you also have a large number of nerve tracts that ultimately go, as we mentioned before, not only to your balance and coordination centers of your body, but ultimately to the higher centers of your brain as well, particularly what we call the prefrontal cortex. It's the part of the brain that's located right up here. It is involved with mood regulation. It is involved with higher executive function. It has to do with the ability to focus, to concentrate, to be able to continue to do things against other stimuli, in other words, ignoring stuff going on in the background. And what this particular research article here is very, very interesting, talks about how it is where a specific adjustment of the neck enhances the function of the prefrontal cortex in your brain. So this one here, manipulation of dysfunctional spinal joints affects sensory motor integration in the prefrontal cortex, a brain source localization study. Now, personally, I don't use the word manipulation. But by this, it means it means a by hand correction of dysfunctional spinal joints. 
A lot of times, whether it's chiropractic, osteopathy, physical therapy, the concept is sometimes that direction doesn't matter. You just need to get some general rubbing or movement through different joints. And that is not what this article is saying at all. What this article is saying is that if you're going to be making changes to brain function, you have to be very precise in knowing which area of the spine is involved, which area is not, and knowing exactly what direction is involved. So this is where it's important that we emphasize dysfunctional spinal joints, not just willy-nilly pushing, poking, prodding on things and then hoping for the best. There's a specific diagnosable problem that we're identifying here. Sensory motor, this refers to the reflex arcs in the brain that's involved with receiving information and then making an appropriate output response. So what the researchers did is they used a series of functional MRIs, and I'll actually scroll down here, and you know we'll share the, the article here for everybody there as well. But what we might be able to see on the illustrations here, and this probably, again, for ease and simplicity, they are looking at brainwave functions and functional MRIs, looking to see what parts of the brain light up when you have different input occur as a result of an adjustment, a specific adjustment to different parts of the neck. And they're looking then to see, is there the not just enhancement, but improvement, the normalization of brain waves? And what they find is they find that when you have a specific adjustment to a problem in the neck, that the prefrontal cortex is one of the areas that lights up. And what they hypothesize here is they hypothesize that because there is so much of that information that's being processed at that brainstem level, that if you can have the normalcy that comes as a result of an adjustment, that what it actually does is it quiets the background noise in a similar way, again, computer running too many programs, it reduces that background noise by turning the equivalent of a whole bunch of dysfunctional programs off. Or it silences the danger, danger, danger signals to where your brain is no longer having its bandwidth basically robbed or stolen. And as a consequence, the brain starts to work at a higher, more functional level. And because it's the prefrontal cortex, it's not, again, simply a matter of pain. It's actually about higher human cognitive functions. So I won't read the whole thing aloud for you here, but our studies, excuse me, our current study findings confirm that spinal manipulation of dysfunctional spinal segments, that is a specific correction, and they were doing it in particular for the neck, reduces the N30 SEP peak amplitude and using dipole source localization demonstrated that this change is taking place in the prefrontal cortex. In other words, the background turbulence, the dysfunction going on in the brain, quiets and calms down. This suggests that, at least in part, the mechanisms by which spinal manipulation improves performance are due to change in function at the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is known to play a vital role in uh, excuse me, sensory motor integration. So again, the interface between what we feel and then how we move and is also responsible for a number of other functions. The prefrontal cortex is known to be a key structure and responsible for the performance of what is known as executive functions. That is thinking, being a human being. It requires planning, a sequence of subtact to accomplish a goal, focusing attention on relevant information, as well as inhibiting irrelevant distractors, being able to switch attention between tasks, monitoring memory, initiation of activity, and responding to stimuli. So that's a mouthful, but that just talks again what we've already mentioned right here, is that the prefrontal cortex is involved with mood regulation, being able to focus. So the number of people who describe a symptom for lack, and it's not a formal diagnosis, but of brain fog or of a sense of jitteriness or anxiety or depression. These are all consequences of abnormal mood regulation. And while there can be a number of other factors that are ultimately involved, 
we can appreciate that it's actually it's the upper part of the neck that may, may have one very important piece into solving this. I'll come back to the model here for just a second because you remember what we talked about those tension tables. So if you've got your brainstem that's sitting right here, and again, vertebra has been locked out of position, you had a physical injury, maybe as a kid you were growing up, you slipped on the ice, you fell down playing sports, you tripped while out running, or you had a minor car accident, you thought no broken bones, everything must be fine, or you had a work injury. Whatever it would be, what it's done is it's produced a small misalignment that is producing constriction around your brainstem in the same way as if I was to tie a rubber band around my fingers. Even if that was not causing a complete breakdown in my circulation, if you add up the accumulation of that stress over weeks, months, years, decades, you better believe it is going to affect brain function in the same way that you can have the accumulation of stress or of chaos in the environment, like if a person's apartment's getting dirty. It usually doesn't happen all at once, but the dirt, the debris, the garbage, all that accumulates slowly over a period of time. And this, unfortunately, is what many people put down to as just normal aging, or maybe it's just stress, or maybe it's, this is just me. I've got something such as an ADD, ADHD, I've got anxiety, I've got depression. And again, I'm not talking or I'm not taking away from the genetic susceptibilities. I'm not taking away from the genuine diagnosable conditions. But we're talking about if, of course, something is irritating you at a subconscious level, at the level of your brainstem, do you think it's possible? that it might be affecting you in other kinds of ways, the exact same ways if you've got a little pebble in your shoe that's just rubbing. Even if it's not rubbing raw, if it's a source of irritation, it's got the potential to be aggravating wherever it is. And if it is at the level of your brainstem, which is the primary processing and vital life center of your body, if there's something that's annoying you there, you better believe that there are gonna be knock-on effects. And again, a lot of times when people think of it as chiropractic, they think, okay, well, I need to go if I've got back pain, headaches, neck pain, all that sort of stuff. But what this research is showing and what we understand about the relationship of the upper part of the neck in particular affecting brain function, it goes well beyond, well beyond that. So always important that we make sure that we're not dealing with different forms of pathology, underlying hormonal conditions, all of these other things that can, yes, and absolutely do affect our mood, diet, exercise, lack of sleep, stress, and so forth and so forth. But we also must not neglect the importance of our neurology working the way that it should be, free of interference, so that your brain and your body are able to communicate the right kind of way. Because if they're not, it can show up in all kinds of weird ways. And particularly because the upper part of the neck has such a profound impact on your brainstem, on the coordination, the processing centers of that brainstem, and then also in turn, how that influences the higher centers of your brain, including that prefrontal cortex, it can show up in a variety of other ways. Brain fog, mood disorders, inability to concentrate, troubles with memory, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. So I hope that this particular little video may help explain a little bit about how exactly that is. Yes, a little bit technical, but also bringing it back to the, the big idea. So if you've enjoyed this particular video here, please do, as always, like and subscribe. It helps so that YouTube is able to recognize that this is valuable to help other people looking for this kind of information as well. If you can think of friends or family who would also benefit from hearing this message, please do share this with them. And last but certainly not least is if we've said something in this video that's resonated with you, we'd have you go over to our website, drjeffreyhanna.com, where you can check out blog articles, videos on all kinds of other topics, talking again about the big idea, how it is that the neck affects your sense of health, well-being in ways that can ultimately impact your overall quality of life. And if, of course, you are in the eastern Washington or greater Spokane region and looking for help with some of these different kind of things, 
reach out to me. You can reach me through the, the website direct. I will always answer my emails through there. Or you can give us a ring at our clinic, which is Clear Chiropractic in Spokane. And you can call us direct at 509-315-8166 to schedule an appointment consultation. We'd be happy to have a chat with you. Do the very best that we can to help you get well, live well, stay well. So until next time, this is Dr. Jeffrey Hanna here at Clear Chiropractic. Take care. Bye-bye.